Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, another fabulous day in the Mud Fossil neighborhood. And what we have here is Glycon, the white naga, once worshipped at Thomas, now is in Romania on the Black Sea. Well, what is a night white naga? Has there ever been one of these? Is that real? Is that, well, I never heard of one of these things before. However, about a year or so ago, my very good friend, Kim Montgomery sent me a picture and said, I, you know, I have this carved head. Do you know anything about this? And I thought, hmm, this is interesting. So I get a hold of Kim and we had a little deal going on, you know, Skyping and this and that for a while. And, uh, and I did, a, you know, a, a virtual autopsy of the head she has. And I believe she has a white naga head. So let's take a look at it and see why I say that and what it actually is. Now, this is the original picture Kim sent me. Uh, I believe this is the original one. I, I, it gets a little blurred. It's been a while. But this, I believe, was the original one. I looked at it and said, whew. You could tell, you see, the, the, you, you have to understand how mud fossils petrify and how they the different types of skin like there's slip skin the, i mean um, a grip skin on your fingers and toes and so forth and there's very thin skins on your eyebrows i mean your uh, eyelids and your uh, you know your lips and your, all that area now so you look you got to look at these things carefully and then there's going to be creases that form in the actual body of the creature that you nobody can cut these little cracks in in these places after they dry out after being salt water petrified and I believe that's what happened to this just like all the rest of them so let's look into the anatomical details uh, of this head and I believe this is a naga head and I believe this is an attached crest which maybe had that hair flowing at one time all right this is the underside of the neck and these are the the artery and vein of the the neck that's the artery i believe and that would be the vein the blacker side and the artery is the red side all right this is the underside of the neck and i don't have the good shots right now that we had done on the skype and so forth but the underside of the neck has the this is the the throat that actually comes up it goes right up through there and the the, the mouth is right up here and you can see all the different the blood vessels and everything when it's got to be wet so she's going to be taking some more pictures of course there is this guy here with the little thing on the back of his head and he's not as good looking as the one kim's got <laughs> I don't know. you see this this particular type of skin is right around the eyelids and this particular type of skin is right around the lips this crack is right in the crack of, just like you're going to end up having a crack in your face when you die, and there's a crease that just happens, and then it makes a seam in there and it cracks. Nobody can put these cracks in here. That is the, that's actually blood, and this was apparently a red-blooded creature, because that's, well, I know it was a red-blooded creature, because the red blood coming out of the back where his head was caved in. It's another shot on the stump. And uh, this, when it's moist, you can see all of the, 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 the architecture and you can see the different variations in the skin and the colors. But you need to put moisture on these things to really be able to tell anything. You see that? That's the same head, dry. You would never know, that, but as soon as you put moisture on it, the reds and the blacks start to show, the creases come out, the, the skin that's different around the eyelids and so forth is manifest you you don't see these things until you put the moisture in it and it rehydrates and rock rehydrates it just rehydrates you put a moisture in there you are going to see colors come out because they suck that water right in and then they give off the colors you see that you can't see any color at all to speak of you know it just looks like something carved but once you put water in there see these little holes here i think that like had a headdress on there or the hair came out of those holes or something happened there i don't know exactly what but my point being here is you don't see all oh that's carved and i would look at that and say yeah that's carved because you don't tell you can't tell until you put the moisture See, as soon as you put a little bit of moisture on, you start the colors come out. These little red spots. Now, these are probably bone foramen. I'm not sure, but the, they're, they're actually blood. 
and you can see there's a change in the color of the eye and the tissue surrounding the eye and, it, and things become quite apparent. See it absorbs more and more moisture they become more and more obvious these different patterns and lines and colors textures. Now this is the side of the head there's a crushing blow to the side of the head there's blood and you know, the black and the red blood running out, and in the back of the head it was crushed in too. Now, I, I, this is, is attached to the head. This is not a separate piece that I can determine. All right, now you see this? This is the back of the head, and it has these fluty ridges, and this is where it's cracked. It's actually cracked the skull, and it's bled out in here and over here as well. So it's it's a red-blooded creature as far as I can determine. Well, it's obviously a red-blooded creature. Once again, now that is a, a, a pretty good shot of it. You can see all the different types of tissues that are there and the little cracks that show up and the seams and all this business. You have to look very close. And Kim had, uh, well, actually, it's uh, Kim doesn't have the microscopes, I don't think. Maybe she does. Tish is another one that I've been working with uh, that has microscopes and she can see all the little details very good. And uh, But I looked at this carefully from my perspective, understanding what's here. And uh, I would love to have to see it in the microscope and be able to see the extreme details. But I don't need that to verify what I'm seeing to understand that was a real creature. That was a creature. You see what it looks like when it's totally dry? You can't hardly tell anything. You need to hydrate these things. That's people look at, oh, that's a rock. They'd laugh at me if I said that was a creature. Well, once you put a little water on there, whole change comes about. As you can see, that's the same head. A little bit different because now it's moist. You can see the different tissue types. It's just, it's so obvious when you have mud fossil eyes. But for all the average people, they, look, oh, they just blow everything off. And I don't know whether it's too much for them to, to allow to come into their mind or they're just, uh, just not capable of uh, understanding. I don't, I don't, I, to me, I can't see how anybody is not capable of understanding the, the obviousness of this, but you know, I see it every day, so I don't know what to say. Right, this is the back of the head once the, the thing dried out. You can see there's still blood over here, but once you dry it out, now if you put moisture in there, you're going to see that red will come right up. And I mean, I have them where the blood just comes gushing right out of it. Blood wants to find water. All right, now I just got a hold of Kim, uh, see if I can get some more pictures of the the neck, better shots underneath the neck. But I, I, I've seen that. I, we went through the video and, you know, through Skype or whatever we did, I can't remember. But we, we I, online, no question, absolutely no question, it's a living creature now. Or it was at one time now, and it could have been that Naga. Apparently, they knew something down in that area, down in South America. The, well, so, I suppose I'll leave it at that, but that Naga head there, I'm sure there is DNA inside of there. All of this red blood you see, if you go into the, our arteries and take that out of there, go deep inside, you got to clean it out with bleach and all this, and clean your tools and your mask and all this stuff. But if you drill in deep into these arterial networks, you're going to pull out literally blood. And the DNA is dense in there. It's not some just like swabbing off a surface and hoping you pick something up. This is the actual guy's blood. And blood has a process called chelation. It's spelled with a CH, chelation, I call it. And it is surrounded by these little molecules. They call them ligands. And they wrap around the blood and they preserve it and sequester it and keep it in its own little environment literally almost forever. So, my point being is these things were alive. DNA is still present in them. I have things loaded with DNA. I have meteorites with DNA. I have meteorites with DNA. Absolutely guarantee you there's DNA in those meteorites. Now, it's silly the things that they're saying about, oh, we're looking for this, we're looking for that. Well, anytime you show them anything, they don't want to see it. So, that's what I'm sharing. Kim's got, uh, got the Naga. You know, I've got all these mud fossils. I got Tish has a brand new, you know, species that was engineered, absolutely engineered, and has many, many, many species of it. It's a fully active site. Nobody seems to be interested in that either. So I take exception with the fact that anybody in, in academia is looking for any answers that I can tell.
or any of them, any experts whatsoever in any side of it. The, the, the crazy people side, the philosopher side, the PhD side, the NASA side, geology side, nobody's interested in seeing anything that does not conform with what they've already decided is the way things are. So, the way things are are not the way things are. The things are the way they are, and that's not the way they are that they think they are. So, that's the way they are.